I don't want to work. I'm getting puppy hugs. Puppy hugs. Let's just sleep, Ludo. Okay, that's good. Come on, let's work. All right, today we are back in the addition build. This is a project that we have been working on over the past two years for our children as they turn 18. Well, the deadline was Nevea, our oldest 18th birthday, and that is just in a couple of days. Not so gonna happen. We didn't quite make the deadline. We have four major projects left to do, three of which we are going to be completing this week, and it's going to be a really short week because it's birthday week. Jeremy's turning 67 no. years old. You can't do it back to me. It's not the same. Nobody's believing you. Nobody's yeah. buying this. Everyone believed you when you said I was 57. That's what made it funny. <laughs> it's not <laughs> funny. Anyway, Jeremy's turning 67. Nevaeh, our oldest, is turning 18, which is something that we as parents are excited about and we're proud of her. But at the same time, it's very emotionally difficult for us this week <laughs> and we are struggling, but we are powering through. And our sweet, sweet baby Kira is turning 12. Yeah, it's always a busy week for us on an annual basis with all the birthdays. We have some additional family that's coming into town and we have a lot to do, so let's jump in. Let's get all to work. Right. All right, 67 year old, let's Come go. On. No. All right guys, final projects. One of the last things that we have to do here in this addition apartment is uh, get some shelving put into this pantry. Pantry's done, we made some adjustments to the doorway because we had some rubbing issues with the trim that goes around the opening. Uh, so we're gonna go downstairs, grab our materials and build our own pantry shelves. Melissa wants me to explain this. We got some cedar one by fours that we started out with here, ripped them down in half. These are essentially gonna serve as our brackets for our pantry shelving. I'm gonna take these upstairs real quick, plug them in, grab a final measurement for our back bracket, which will be the slightly longer one. Get that one set in. Once I know that we are good to go with all of our measurements, we'll continue on. We're gonna do four shelves in total. Jeremy got the first shelf brackets installed and now we're working on the other three. So she's also going to have the floor space for storage for cereal boxes or bags of rice or whatever you might need. So we're going to space the four shelves 16 inches apart so that they're tall enough for the tallest of cereal boxes. The top shelf is going to be a little bit high for food storage, but it's a great space for extra blanket storage or extra kitchen storage, whatever she might need that for. Uh, one by 12 pine boards that we have set up on our saw here are going to serve as our pantry shelving material. We're going to cut these down to the proper width and then uh, given the width of the actual boards, we're going to have to rip one of the three sections that we're going to cut for each shelf down. Let's get to work. So in addition to these two pieces, we need an eight and three quarters piece on the front or on the back. We'll probably put it on the back. So there are going to be little seams in here, which is not a big deal because you're not even gonna really see them. But if it bothers her or if she's worried about crumbs or anything like that, she can actually do a liner, which I always encourage in pantries anyway, because there's spills and liners are really cute and they're super easy to swap out whenever you need to. So we'll probably end up doing liners in here. But we consider doing malamine and then we also consider doing plywood and priming it and painting it and all of that. But this was just the strongest option and I actually really like the way that it looks. So we're gonna go with that. We're gonna get some cute little liners for the top and we'll be good to go. Not quite done yet. I know that, but I was just getting all that. You're so smart, man. you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> I like when you don't agree with me, you're like, you're so smart. <laughs> you're just so smart. <laughs> you're so smart. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. And it smells good too. It does. Pine. Pine. 
Cedar and pine. Yeah, it smells like cedar. Those are things that people think are possible. Brackets. Boom. All right, that's one project down. A couple more to go. Get that done tomorrow? I think we can knock out both tomorrow. Sounds good, Mom. Sounds good. Closet in, then the can actually start moving some of her clothes under. Yeah, tell me what you want here. I don't know what this is supposed to look like. Today we are starting in the bedroom closet. Now, this is a walk in closet technically, but it's not massive, so we do want to make the most out of the space. The back wall is four feet across, so I think we're going to do two shorter bars that are four feet, and they'll be for like t shirts and shorter hanging things. And then along the long wall, we will do one long hanging closet bar which will be for dresses, pants, skirts, things that hang long. So, oh. I didn't say anything. I don't know what you're laughing about. As soon as I said it, I knew you'd be making a face and then you were making the face. <laughs> anyway, for dresses that will hang along this wall. I don't think you need to cut this one. You gotta think about the door too. Okay, yeah, no. It needs to go all the way to the end. Try the door. Okay. It's really, really close. Oh, yeah, that might be kind of annoying. You walk in and there's just clothes here. We might have to cut it regardless because yeah. I don't know how far off the wall it's going to be. I would almost say shorten it by like 18 inches so that it's just, you're not walking into a closet bar. Yeah. Yeah, and then she can hang a mirror. For the closet, we decided to go with a really simple system. We just got these brackets. They literally attach to the wall. We got closet bars to sit in here and then shelves to sit on the top. So it should be pretty quick and painless. The reason we wanted to go really simple with the closet is because there's going to be different people living in here. It's going to be Nevea, then Kaimani, then Kira, then Eli, if they so wish. And maybe us one day when they stick us up here when we're old. Kira has said that when I get really old and I need help with the property and things like that, she's like, don't worry, mom, I'm going to put you in the apartment. Wait, why is it just you? <laughs> I don't know. Are we assuming she's that I'm no longer going to be here? that you've passed. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, that's just, that's the, just the mind of sweet little Kira. She's like, mom, I'll never put you in a home. I'm going to put you in the apartment. <laughs> so I have to build that with this in mind. One day this could be my closet bar. Let's get to work. Now that we have the first three brackets up, we have to look at this back corner and try to figure it out. I wanted the shelf to go all the way around, kind of like one continual piece. So I think we need to put up the back wall brackets first, put that shelf up and then measure this shelf to it. But it is going to look a little funny in the corner because now we have one bracket going this way and one bracket going that way and they're literally running into each other. So maybe they make some kind of a corner bracket for closets, but not where we were shopping. So we're gonna do the very best we can. And I think once the clothes and everything are in here, you're not gonna notice it anyway. It's the little things you notice when the place is empty. I think this corner will work out because you'll have the shelf going that way and it will join here. Now, even though this one has to be cut short, this one will go all the way. And this little section here, hidden behind these clothes is where we, we call it the ugly section. No, I think it'll work. It's the ugly section. It's where you put the stuff you never wear. Only one way to find out though. Let's go grab those shelves, set these other bars in, Alisa. 
Before we get started, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, AG1, and mix up my favorite daily pick-me-up. I've been drinking AG1 every single day for about three years now, and I rely on it for not only that feel-good energy boost that it gives me, but it also fills in all of those nutritional gaps in my diet that I'm pretty sure most of us have. So as I'm getting older, I'm realizing that an investment in my health is actually an investment in my future, but I wanted to make sure that I was using the best products because what good is a supplement if your body can't absorb it and actually use it? I trust AG1 because they source ingredients from bioavailable forms, making it easy for your body to use each nutrient. AG1 is the perfect all-in-one foundational nutrition supplement with 75 vitamin, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in one simple daily serving. It's a daily ritual that is so simple to stick to. Just add one scoop or one travel pack, eight ounces of water, shake it up, and you are good to go. In this one delicious and very refreshing little green drink, I get gut, energy, and immune support in one convenient daily serving. I like mine shaken over ice, but it is also perfect in smoothies. To check out AG1 for yourself, just click the link down in the description below to get a year's supply of the vitamin D3K2 plus five free travel packs with your first purchase. All right, now that I'm looking at it, I like the way that it looks a lot and I'm very torn on whether or not I wanna add a shelf down there. I like the way it looks. I think this is very adequate space for one person, but as we're building this, we're trying to keep in mind that this is forever going to be on our property and attached to our home and here for our children or our grandchildren or whatnot. So at some point, we could end up with a couple living up here. That's yeah. twice the clothes. We could also end up with like a couple with a baby living up here. What if one of our children has a child and then wants to save money to build their own home? And now we have little baby clothes. So I kind of feel like maybe, you can tell I have wishful You're thinking You're fantasizing. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> so like maybe, you know, like if you build it, they will come. So like maybe if I build two smaller ones, it's perfect for like number one grandma onesies, things like that. Yeah. Wow. I know. Wow. Down the road. Way down the road. Like five to seven to ten years down the road. That's what type this time so I'm talking about. Woo! Yeah. Shelves, mama, shelves. That looks good. I'm excited. I think it looks nice. Closet of art. Closet of art. Twice. The process of doing that hit myself twice. You're like kind of poop panda. <laughs> attempted to do this and the doors were so thick that the screws didn't reach and we tried to uh, order extension packs where it was like a longer screw that was specifically made for these but apparently they no longer sell them or they're discontinued so Jeremy was able to go to the hardware store and find something that looked similar it's not exactly what comes with them but I think it's gonna work All right, just as we thought we were done, we went to try the lock and the lock just spins. So as you can see, the lock just spins. Now we need locks for sure on the bathroom and the front door. Uh, the problem that we're having is the lock has a little pull in there that needs to slide in here. So even though we were able to extend this with longer screws to make it fit the really wide door, the lock mechanism now does not reach here and therefore it is non-functioning. There is no way to extend that. So our only option is going to be to have to chisel in a square in the back of the door to recess this in. And there's no way to make that perfect. 
it's definitely going to mess up the stain and everything on the door. So the only thing we can really do is try to make the square as perfect as possible and then try to do some touch up stain. But I honestly don't think it's gonna look amazing. So right when we thought we had these doors figured out. New problem. All right, while cleaning up, we were about to walk out the door and we realized that we had bought these quick set handles for the exterior doors. And I started looking at them and then I was realizing that the quick set handles that I bought on Amazon that came in this really suspicious box here and not an official package do not look the same. So I'm pretty sure I got scammed with cheap Chinese knockoffs of quick set handles. You definitely did. <laughs> this is made in Taiwan. These ones, these ones say Connecticut. So yeah, I think that we were had and that's why we've been having such a difficult time with these handles. So we're gonna do one last ditch effort. We're going to install the handles that we meant for outside in here and see if it works. And if it works, we'll just replace these when we do the exterior doors. But fingers crossed, we still might be able to do our third project. Dunzo. Dunzo. I'm so happy that these work. <laughs> yeah, me too. So much better. Door handles. So before we go in for the night, we were just talking about, well, I guess we've been talking about this a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, how much we are struggling <laughs> with our oldest child becoming an adult. Yeah. We mentioned it briefly at the start of this video and yeah, if we're being completely transparent and honest, it's been a struggle. I know for a lot of people, it seems ridiculous because Nevaeh is just moving next door to us. Not that big of a deal. Yeah, she's moving next door, but it's more than that. It's that she's now technically an adult. She can make a lot more of her own choices and she doesn't need to ask us all the time. She can go somewhere. Like, it's going to be very, very different because we're trying to allow her that separation and that space and, and, and make sure that she's using this time to turn into her own person, develop into her own person. And so... It's just, it's hard as parents because with your first, you're experiencing everything for the first time. I feel like she just turned 16 and we just started this she build. Did. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since we started working on this and the passage of time is such a difficult thing to grapple with. And for us lately, if again, just being honest, it's been um, just kind of a struggle to make sense of all the very complicated uh, feelings, I guess, that we have been having with uh, having our first child reaching this stage of life. And for us, this marks um, the beginning of a period of transition. And uh, it's caused a lot of reflection and uh, <laughs> and reminiscing about all the good times that we've had together as a family. And now um, we're gonna be down one and it's gonna feel a lot different. So Yeah, yeah, I mean, we could end up going on trips that she doesn't wanna go on. And <laughs> we were all, we've always been a family of six and she may not even stay in this apartment very long. She might stay here for six months or a year or three months and then say, you know, I'm gonna to move to a different city or a different state. And there's nothing we can do about that but encourage her. And so this is just gonna be a really, really different chapter. And it really is just a start because then it's Kaimani and then it's Kira and then it's our last one. And so this has been, it's been hard. Like I said, we're proud of her, we're happy. But every birthday is a reminder that another year has gone on and this is the start of a new chapter. And the end of this edition build, coinciding with her turning 18, it's like when we started it, we felt like we had so much ahead of us and then it was just done in a blink of an eye and that's how parenting is. And I know that we have a whole new chapter that's ahead of us, but for today, for this week, we're struggling a little bit. We really are. It's a good thing. I can't wait to see what it is she does in her life. It's been the honor of our lifetime to raise her. We had her at such a incredibly early age. We were not ready to have a child. So I, I guess that plays a big part of why it is that we are so uh, overcome with emotion for this stage of transition. So it'll we be- We did pretty good <laughs> for, for how we started. We did all right. So we are gonna mop up our tears that are welling up. <laughs> We're going to celebrate Nevea turning 18. Kira turning 12. Kira turning 12. And I'm turning 67. 67. <laughs> Doesn't he look good? <laughs> so it's been, uh, it's been an amazing experience. Can't wait to have that celebration when all our family comes into town.
We spent the next day getting ready for a party. A party that reminds us just how quickly 18 years can go. It truly feels like yesterday that our firstborn was brand new and we enjoyed every single moment of it. But oh how quickly birthdays can turn from tea parties and dolls to new pots and pans, a vacuum, a tray full of silverware, and a hand-woven fruit basket in the shape of a lemon, all to get her started in her very first apartment. We were so blessed with our first daughter, and then six years after welcoming her, we had our second, sweet baby Kira. We didn't even think it was possible, but the years somehow went even faster with her. So here we are, 12 incredible and beautiful years later, and she's just as perfect today as she was at the moment that she was born. We often say that the world has never seen a sweeter soul and how very blessed we are to call her ours. These two girls have brought us so much joy and fear, laughter and adventure. And yes, we dared to blink. And just like that, 18 years passed by. But no matter the speed, We were there for all of it. Every tear, every step, and every milestone. And we wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. You are my sunshine. Yeah.